Hello and welcome to this week's news bulletin from the Christian Institute. An MP has told atheists to get over Britain being a Christian nation and stop imposing their politically correct intolerance on others. The Community Secretary Eric Pickles was speaking at the Conservative Spring Forum in London when he said, I've stopped an attempt by militant atheists to ban councils having prayers at the start of meetings, if they wish. Heaven forbid, we're a Christian nation. We have an established church, get over it, and don't impose your politically correct intolerance on others. In February 2012, Mr Pickles fast-tracked new laws to override a High Court's decision to ban councils from having prayers at official meetings. The move followed a case of a local atheist ex-councillor who sued Biddeford Town Council over prayers being said at meetings. The council was supported by the Christian Institute's Legal Defence Fund. A regional newspaper has reportedly lost thousands of sales after publishing a picture of two homosexual men kissing on its front page. The Bristol Post featured the image to mark the city's first same-sex marriage. Its editor, Mike Norton, said the drop in sales surprised him as the paper only received nine complaints about the image. Writing on the paper's website, he later asked readers if he had gone too far with publishing a gay kiss on the front page. A Christian Institute spokesman has told BBC Radio Ulster that extending Sunday trading hours would put pressure on employees as well as interfere with family and church life. Speaking on The Nolan Show, Callum Webster commented, One individual's choice to shop for longer hours on a Sunday takes away the freedom of others who have to work. The debate was triggered by a push in England and Wales to relax the law on Sunday trading. Major retailers, including Asda, Morrisons and Selfridges, are backing a parliamentary campaign seeking to keep shops open for longer on Sunday. Mr Webster said... An individual might choose only to shop for an hour or two, but Sunday shop workers will, are already in Northern Ireland spending five hours away, plus travel time from their home. A health minister has said women who are seeking abortions do not need to see a doctor. Speaking during a House of Lords debate, Earl Howe commented... A number of noble lords, including my noble friend Lady Knight, raised the issue of doctors um, forming an opinion on, uh, of grounds for an abortion without actually seeing or examining the woman. Since the 1967 Abortion Act was passed, the law has required that two doctors certify in good faith that there are lawful grounds for any abortion, and that must be based on understanding the facts of a woman's case whether they personally see or examine the woman uh, or not. The debate was prompted by Baroness Knight of Collingtree, who discussed Section 1 of the 1967 Abortion Act. Clause 1 lists a vital condition on which abortion became legal, that two doctors must see and examine the patient and certify that the operation would be legal. The object of that was to ensure, on such a serious matter as the death of a child, that a second opinion had been sought and two doctors separately concurred. Baroness Knight also highlighted the 2012 scandal involving doctors pre-signing abortion forms. The incident was later investigated by the General Medical Council. The topic of abortion was also raised in a House of Commons debate this week by Conservative MP Fiona Bruce. Mrs Bruce urged the government to rethink the law which currently allows a disabled child to be aborted at full term. The legal limit for able-bodied babies, however, is 24 weeks. She told the House about the lack of rights for an unborn disabled child. A disabled unborn child has effectively no rights up to birth. Many people are shocked to learn that he or she can be aborted right up to birth, as many as 16 weeks beyond the 24-week threshold for able-bodied babies. But the moment after birth, a whole panoply of rights and support suddenly comes into play for the disabled child. I know this from personal experience and here declare an interest. My own son Sam was born with a club foot one of the defects for which an abortion up to birth can be obtained. Yet within minutes of his birth, the hospital telephoned its specialist in treating club feet, who was on leave at the time, and who rushed in within two hours 
to begin manipulating Sam's foot, to think that such a treatable disability could have deprived him from life. And he's far from alone. Mrs Bruce called on Health Minister Jane Ellison to review the abortion legislation in light of society's medical, legal and cultural progress. She responded by saying parents with a disabled unborn child have to make exceptionally difficult decisions. Doctors and other professionals need to work really hard to ensure that parents are properly supported and have all the information they need to come to a decision. Um, I think we'd all share her concern that um, some people have reported feeling rushed uh, and not feeling that they've been given proper information. Movie star Emma Watson has said the fashion industry's projection of women is dangerously unhealthy. The actress who stars in the film Noah told the Sunday Times how she has in the past felt the pressure to look perfect. She said, as a younger woman, that pressure got me down, but I've made my peace with it. With airbrushing and digital manipulation, fashion can project an unobtainable image that is dangerously unhealthy. I'm excited about the ageing process. I'm more interested in women who aren't perfect. She recently retweeted a picture of herself dressed up for the New York premiere of Noah with a caption, I did not wake up like this. Well, that's all for this week. For more information and regular updates on all our stories, plus much more, visit our website at christian.org.uk. Until next time, goodbye.